we were talking about you being cheap because mm-hmm. you drive a soccer mom SUV. That Grand Cherokee is so it's nice. It's so nice, but it's not a eighteen million dollar a year income car. Yeah, but who cares? I, I, I when what, are you going to get something that's like, oh, this is sick? When I bought that Audi, yeah, I that was sick. That was sick, but yeah. I, that was that was the. I think that was my my first time I ever had like a crisis, because I I had a little bit of my carbon fiber peeling on my Grand Cherokee, which is covered under warranty, by the way. And I was like, oh my God. And I had this midlife crisis where the, I mean, Sour Strips was doing at that point, we were at Summer Park Drive. I mean, I mean, nowhere near what we're doing now. But even then I was like, I am the owner of this successful candy company. I'm doing well. I have plenty of money in the bank. I can't believe that I'm driving around in a 2015 Grand Cherokee. Peeling I, carbon fiber. Yeah. But mm-hmm. pe- and, and yeah, no. And, and, and I was like, people need to like know that I'm successful mm-hmm. essentially. And I had a midlife crisis. When I just bought the RS6, mm-hmm. I think that kind of, there was a little bit of a, you know, you're yeah. trying to copy me. So I, I get it. It's cool. Yeah, I was. So you, you, but, but I got that and I hated every, not only did I really honestly dislike the car a little bit, but I, yeah. I, I hated the way I hated the reasoning why I bought that car. But you will buy the the new cert when it comes out. The day that, Even that if, what if the new cert's one hundred and seventy five grand? You still buy it? Yes. Okay, so it's not about the money. It's just you want a cert. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I respect that. Because on the on the flip side, I think I think some people think that my whole like me not buying expensive stuff is my flex to like be able to be like I have a lot of money and I don't buy that stuff and like but, but it's not. I just don't care. Jeep just hasn't released a cert yet. Correct. So Jeep, if someone had Jeep's watching, you can make a half million dollar SUV and one person would buy it. I will be the first one on the lot if I, if I can get it. You won't. There's no one out there that likes Jeep more than me. No, but it, they're going to go over sticker. It, it'll be a whole thing. Uh, so I asked on my Instagram before this, I was like, hey, give us some topics. And one that was hit on a lot that feeds right into this uh, was like mortgage, car payment. How do I know? How do you look at it and say how much money I can spend on a car or my mortgage compared to what I'm making? Oh, I have no idea. I, what's like, what? where would you be comfortable? Like if you had a thousand dollar car payment, you think you should be like, so I'm, I go against the grain. A lot of people are like, oh, you spend so much money on cars. You must be making a million dollars a month. And really, no, I just pick the cars. I buy a little bit uniquely so they don't lose value. So I don't really mind putting some money in, but there's typically like the 10% rule mm-hmm. but that doesn't really work. Cause if you make 50 grand a year, I mean, car payment at $400, $500 a month, is not going to be a nice car. Well, I, I, and I, and I think even for like rent or your mortgage, it should mm-hmm. be what? No more than. 20 or 30 percent like 30 40 30 yeah, percent of your I mean, if you're your making 50 income. grand a year what kind of rent are you getting for 800 dollars a month i don't, I think don't that exist anymore i've never at any point of my income i've never really i've never looked at it as of like how much of this is of the money that i'm coming in you didn't it wasn't until you moved here i gave you shit because he'd buy all of his cars cash it wasn't until i think the rsq8 might have been the first one that you took a loan on well i just thought long term and this is where i was saying i was like i didn't process the whole you can use that money and put it in the stock market and make yeah. a better return and make money on that money instead of lose it all. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was more like, let's see if, if my, my SRT, when I bought it was like 50 grand, it was like 55 grand. Um, and I, I put, I don't know, 10 down or something for a little bit. And I had a loan for a small period of time. And then about four months in, I looked at my car payment thing and with the interest rate, I don't know what it was, you know, like back in 2.9 2, or something. Yeah. Like back that. in 2016. But it was like over the course of your years, you're going to spend an extra 10 grand. I don't know what it was. Five grand, 10 grand. But I was like, I don't want to spend 10 extra grand. I'll, no. I'll just pay for it now. And then I don't owe that money. So that was my logic of paying it off. The opposite logic of using the money. I, that's not what I thought. I got, well, I wasn't yeah. like, and even now I'm that Jeep now is 100% on a loan. I don't do any of that. And that's just for, and I was just like, Oh, I don't, have to. I'm, I'm a strong, like 10% down minimum. Mm-hmm. So you're not super upside down when you go to sell it. So it was a hundred thousand dollar car, put $10,000 down minimum. And then I think I think I agree with like no more than ten to fifteen percent of your income on a car payment, but it depends on what the car is and it depends on your life. If you have three kids and own a house with your wife, you probably shouldn't be spending that much money on a car. But if you live at home with your parents or you have a cheap rent, like then you can spend maybe thirty percent. I feel like you gotta, you gotta if, weigh it out. If for you yourself, want my but. honest opinion, and this is like how I've thought, and this isn't just because I'm I can afford more things now. I think if you need to bust out the calculator and figure out the percentages of mm-hmm. if you can afford it, you shouldn't buy it. Like, like it shouldn't be a concern to you and that it scales as you go. But I, I think if you are going to stress about a purchase, you shouldn't buy it. I, I, I believe in the, you know, you should be able to buy it almost twice over. Yeah. That doesn't always apply. 
but it, it should not stress you out. When I moved into my apartment in Northern Virginia, it was either three thousand dollars or thirty five hundred. It was a lot of money still today, and it was a lot back then. I'm about to move into an apartment. I'm doing the same thing right now. Where I'm like, this is a big chunk of money yeah. every month into a but, fucking box. But here's the way that I thought about it this, and this again, doesn't always apply. Sometimes I think the more bills that I have, the harder it's gonna make me work because Maybe. now I, I, have to, I have to succeed. I have to make money to pay off this shit. Or you're gonna be homeless. You can always make more money, dude. What is going on, guys? I am Max Tuning, your host. I hope you enjoyed this little clip. If you wanna see the full, magical, lovely episode, just click the link down in the description or search Don't Be Sour on your favorite podcast streaming service. And remember, thank you for tuning in.